going to do is let's go ahead and start with a sketch. All right, and we're going to do a sketch, and the way because I like the perspective, I'm going to do it on the uh, XZ plane, and I'm going to reformat this so top is normal. Okay, so top says top right there. So I'm going to start with what I'm going to do basically is I'm going to sketch the bottom of the part as a rectangle, and then I'm going to make a big box. And from that big box, I'm going to take away parts of it. There are obviously lots of ways to model this, so if you feel like you can model it differently, then go for it, okay? I'm going to start by creating a rectangle, and I'm going to have this rectangle be one point, was it 1.75 by 1.25, okay? And there's my rectangle, right? So 1.75 by 1.25. Again, just kind of going on, if you want to look on page two to see the part that we're in the middle of working on, you should, okay? Kind of see what we're doing there. And then that's it, we're gonna finish the sketch. Okay, so let's take a look at what happens here. We got this rectangle, we're gonna extrude this rectangle and we're gonna extrude it to a height of 1.25. And remember that in our initial volume calculation, we said, let's pretend like it's a big box, right? Well, there's your big box. Your big box that is 1.75 inches this way, 1.25 inches this way, and 1.25 inches this way, right? So. To model the part, to model the part, what we're going to do now is we're going to subtract away parts of this box, kind of like how I subtracted the volume away when we calculated it by hand. So I'm going to start by creating a 2D sketch on the top, and we're going to take away most of it right now. We're going to take away the, um, the, the, the larger box that we had last calculated. So I'm going to take a rectangle tool, drop it in the corner, make sure we get that green line, green dot, excuse me and we'll put it over here. Now, we said that block, uh, if we're looking at the top down, it was 1.25 by 1.25, right? Whoops, not 12, 1.25 by 1.25. And if we constrained it to the corner, it'll look something like that, okay? So we finish the sketch, and then we're going to extrude. Got it, all right? We're gonna extrude, but not as a join. We're going to extend cut it. And we're going to cut it that depth of 0.75 inches. Okay? And see how the color changes here? This is a preview. When I hit the check mark, look what happens. Now I've already now I've cut that 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 mass out. All right? So you want to see that again, what we'll do is we'll just kind of undo it. We take the sketch. We're going to instead of joining, we're going to switch the mode to cut. Your dialog box may vary. Mine is mine is like this because I am on a slower lower resolution for the video. Uh, but then we switch to a cut and we extrude a depth of 0.75. The direction automatically changes and we cut away. Okay, and we're going to do that two more times. So you'll see you'll see it again. We're going to create next a sketch on the top here, and we're going to do a rectangle. We're going to do some dimensions this time because it's in the middle. So I'm going to sketch the rectangle, and I'm going to locate those edges a quarter of an inch away from either side. So I'm going to take this top edge and take this top edge and make this 0.25. And I take this top edge and this top edge and I'm going to make that 0.25. Right? And then we're going to do the same thing. How, how, how deep are we going to cut this? Am I going to cut at 0.75 based on the part? This is where you guys chime in. That's 0.25. Yeah, we're going to go 0.25 this time, okay? So 0.25. And then we cut that out. Now we got that little cut out here. All right. And then we got one more, and that's we got to do it on this face. We're going to cut from here. We're going to go this way. Alternatively, we also could sketch a rectangle, rectangle, excuse me, on the top of this face, and then go down. But I think it's easier if we sketch a smaller rectangle on the side here. Okay. So we're going to go to the sketch mode, create a sketch here, and I'll draw a rectangle from the top to the bottom, and again, I'll locate the sides. In this case, I want the sides to be, I believe it's a half an inch on either side. Okay, yep, 0.5 here, and 0.5 here. All right, and then we finish the sketch, and we'll extrude it, but again, a cut, and we're gonna cut 0.75. And there you have it. Okay, so there's your part. Now, this part is not the default material, 
okay? Because if we were to do a property analysis right now, it would be using a default material with the default the density and all kinds of things that would not help us. But remember, we're told at the beginning that the part is a specific material. What was that material again? Aluminum. It's aluminum, okay? So we're going to go ahead and we're going to switch this to aluminum, okay? So let's go to the tools menu and we're going to go to the material, okay? And we're going to select aluminum. We have three types of aluminum to choose from. In this case, we're going to select aluminum 6061, okay? Now watch this though. Let's move it up so it's part of the document. Okay, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click this and I'm going to assign it to the selection. And now it's hard to tell, but you can see how the shade changed. So now it's actually an aluminum piece. Okay, aluminum 6061. Okay, now let's say, now watch this. Remember how when we calculated or when we referenced, we used the density of 2.6, right? Instead of the, well, if we go to the, sorry, let me show you what I did there. When you add it to the list, you can edit it by right-clicking or you can click this little pencil mark here. When I click that pencil, I'm going to get a few tabs that I can play with, okay? And one of those is physical properties. The physical property in this case that we want to look at is the mechanical physical property. Oh, sorry, the strength physical. No, no, I was right. The mechanical physical property, okay? And it tells us here that the density of aluminum is 0 0.098 pounds per cubic inch, okay? Which is true. However, what was the calculated value that we used? Was it, was it 0 0.098? Well, in this case, no, it was actually 0 0.094. So we're gonna change it and we can do that, all right? So we change that part here and it's gonna ask us to duplicate it, duplicate the material, we hit okay, save the edits and that's it, okay? So now, let me make sure. I'm going to make sure that, that that edit worked. Just to be sure. And sure, sure enough, it is. Okay. Now, let's go ahead and add this one to the selection instead. All right. Now, here's the cool part. Remember that surface? No, sorry, we haven't done the surface area yet. But remember the density calculation? You remember the volume calculation that we had to do? The ones that took a little bit, a little bit of time to do? Well, watch this. We go to the part. And we're going to right click part two in the browser, or in this case, my have, I have part two. You have probably part one. We're going to right click that and we go to the eye properties. On the eye properties, the very last tab is called physical. Switch to physical and click the update button because it should have the material you had selected. Click the update button and watch this. What's the mass? 0.129. What's the surface area? 10.250. What's the volume? 1.375. How close were we? What did we get? Did we get 1.338? That's pretty good, right? We got 1.38 when we did it by hand, okay? We got 1.375 when we did it with the software. So there you have it. That's how to find all the physical properties of your part, and you can do it with any other part you have. And I'll also show you um, after this, I will also show you how to make a material up, which is part of 5.6 as well.